What's going on, everybody? And welcome to a brand new edition of Hair Mistakes at AG Faster. I am really excited about this particular episode. Are you excited about this episode? Super excited. Why? I have no idea yet. Exactly, because I haven't told her. <laughs> no, I am really excited about it because I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna introduce you here to Paula. And when I saw Paula's photos, I realized this is a tough one. It's not gonna be easy. And not because there's a lot of mistakes, but quite the opposite, because there's actually not a whole lot of mistakes going on. And I clearly haven't shown you the photos yet on purpose because I have been for the last couple of videos telling you to comment below with what you think we should do to see if you can kind of catch on to what I would suggest. And you guys are killing it. You are doing so well that I don't want to stop this, so let's just keep it going. Uh, so while I show you these photos and I read Paula's email that she sent to me, why don't you go ahead and comment below with what you would suggest, not what you think I would suggest, but what you would suggest to do. And then let's see how close you are. Sound like a plan? Okay, Paula's email is short and sweet, and it says, my head kind of comes to a point, so I have usually worn bangs to mitigate that. I try to wear it naturally, but I'm not opposed to styling as well, just not something that takes super long. I don't think she's alone on that. I think a lot of people are willing to style their hair as long as they don't have to spend too long on it. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the video, but for now, let's dive into some mistakes. Okay, so let's jump into some mistakes, but if you're new to the series, what happens in the series is actually people send me in photos of themselves asking if there's making any potential mistakes with their hair, and if so, if I could give them any suggestions so they can get a little bit more of a youthful look. Now, in this particular episode, uh, as I said before, there's not massive mistakes that Paul is making. These are more kind of nuances that make minor shifts to really enhance the current style that she's wearing right now. And then at the end of the video, I will show you some curveballs if we decided to switch things up a little bit, uh, what that would look like. But for now, the first kind of mistake, if you will, mistake that I'm seeing is the length is just a little bit longer than I personally would like to see it. I think if we bring this length up just a little bit, it will help to liven the shape up a little bit or lighten the shape up a little bit. And that's gonna help to keep it from looking too heavy. Paula has a lot of hair and it's curly. We'll talk a little bit more in a minute how that plays into this, but it can have a tendency to get very heavy looking and start to drag the eye down. So lifting that shape up a little bit will help to kind of lift the overall shape up a little bit. That made sense, right? Yeah, it did. So mistake number two. Now, mistake number two deals with the layering. And we talked a second ago about kind of curly hair and thick, coarse curly hair on top of that really has a tendency to kind of grow out before it grows down. Now, this is something that curly hair sees anyway. If you've got curly hair, you know what I'm talking about. But in this particular situation, the lack of layering or how long the layers are is actually creating more of that bulk through the very bottom, which is in turn creating a little bit more of that triangular shape that I talk about all the time. And this has a tendency to bring the eye down versus what we want to do, which is lift the eye up. So lightening up those layers just a little bit will help to lighten up the shape a bit and both create more volume in the areas that we want it, more importantly, take some volume away from the areas where we kind of don't want it to alleviate that triangular shape and create the illusion there's more volume in the areas that we want it. I already tuned you out. <laughs> Not shocking. Okay, now the third mistake kind of piggybacks a little bit off of the second mistake. And that is that if you look right here on the profile photo, you'll see that there's a point of bulk or a little bit extra weight right in this one particular area. Now there's two reasons for this. One of those is because the shape is beveling at the very bottom around the nape. Now this is actually a good thing. I'm glad that they did this and I would definitely recommend to do this in the future. But what can happen is as those shapes grow, the top start to get heavy like we were talking about earlier. And then that little bit of beveling helps to layer that in at the bottom. But then the heaviness in the top and the beveling combine to kind of create this one little point of heaviness. We obviously can alleviate that by lightening those layers up, which we talked about earlier. But there's another reason that this is actually happening. And if you notice on this other side, the other profile, you'll see that it isn't nearly as severe as on this profile. You'll also notice that when you look at the front of this shape, you actually see a little bit more volume and a little bit less bulk in that area on this side than you do on this side. And the reason for that is, 
And I don't know that this is what Paula always does, but she currently has her hair parted on this side. Now what happens is if you actually pull layers up and layer them or cut them straight across and then you part it on one side or the other dramatically at all, you're going to see that when those layers fall, these layers have a further distance to travel and end up when the hair is down and you look straight ahead at somebody, it ends up looking shorter on this side than it does on the other side. That will actually make that one side look a little bit heavier, which creates a little bit more of that triangular shape, whereas you're not seeing it as much on the other side. So it's pretty easy to address this, which is simply you actually cut this one particular side a little bit shorter than the other side so that when they fall down and you're looking straight on, it actually looks like they're even. One thing to pay attention to though is if you are flipping your hair back and forth, you don't really want to cut it shorter on one side or it's going to be very off on the other side. So in that scenario, you would cut it like it is cut right now. However, if you're always parting it on one side, then that is the perfect time to cut that one side a little shorter. If you're new to me, you might be wondering, who is this guy and why are we out in the middle of the woods? Well, my name is Justin Hickox. This is my wife. What's your name, babe? <laughs> oh, hi. I'm so sorry. My name is Deanna. There you go. <laughs> I have been doing hair since 1995 professionally, and so on this channel, I like to take you on adventures while I teach you about hair. Pretty straightforward. So uh, instead of seeing a salon in the background, uh, you'll see this kind of stuff. Well, not that. Better views, if I'm completely honest. That's my point. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, wait a minute, why are you back at the car? This video isn't even over. What is going on? Um, well, real quickly, before we jump into the suggestions that I'll be sharing in a second and showing you exactly what everything will look like on Paula, if she decides to take my ideas and show you the curveballs I've got lined up, we're going to finish this video out here in the parking lot. Car right there. The car is driving by, making all sorts of noise. Why? Because uh, on our way to this next area, so we could film this part, I started feeling a little tickle on my side, a little irritation on my ribs. And as much as I tried to address it, it just kept on getting worse and worse until finally I found myself in the middle of the trail, taking off my jacket, my sweatshirt, completely shirtless, standing there, reaching to my side to figure out what's going on. When I looked at this one and said, is there something over here? What was your response? Uh, it's a tick. <laughs> So as she's screaming, it's a bloodthirsty, lime-infested mutant tick that is mauling you currently and laughing <laughs> about it, never offering any help to get said tick that I can't reach off of me. Well, when you see your husband go, what? 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 <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> so just so you know, while you guys are commenting in the comment section how great she is and how funny she is she's also very dangerous <laughs> just remember that but don't I, worry i helped you you didn't i did i squeezed your skin so you could pick it off as you which as i laugh i don't even know if ticks are around here i don't know what that was all i know is it still hurts yeah. i can promise you that so if i you know what rather than hang out more in whatever area that is it has whatever that was uh we're just gonna come out here and we're gonna finish this video up now so with all that said, let's talk about some suggestions. Okay, so the first mistake we talked about was that the length was just a tiny bit too long, at least in my opinion. So this is what it looks like if we bring that length up a little bit. Now, on one hand, it does lighten the shape up a little bit, but if we're honest, if you take a good look at this, you'll actually see that it kind of compounds the two other mistakes that we talked about. So realistically, just bringing the length up by itself doesn't really do us any justice. It actually kind of makes it look more triangular. Now, the part that we really want to pay attention to with this is showing you why it's so important to cut shape into curly hair and not try to style it in. With straight hair, you're styling the shape in with products and the way you use a round brush or a flat iron or curly iron or whatever. Whereas with curly hair, we're much more reliant on the shape just kind of being there. And then during the drying process, you're just kind of enhancing that shape that's already there. Simply bringing that length up a little bit really isn't getting us to where we want to get. So with that said, let's move on to the next suggestion. Okay, since mistake number two and three were both essentially about kind of volume and layering and where the volume sits, I'm gonna show you the suggestions for those two at the same time. So if we were to actually lighten the layers up, create a little bit more lift in the top area where you kinda of wanna see it and pull the bulk out of the sides at the same time, this is what all of that would look like. Now again, we're 
kind of fixing a problem that I guess really isn't there. Like I said before, polish shape looks great, but just simply bringing this length up a little bit, taking a little bit of that bulk out of certain areas to kind of tweak the shape a little bit, in my opinion, gives it a much more light and kind of airy look and also gives it a little bit more of a youthful kind of feel because we start to really accentuate Paula's amazing cheek structure and her cheekbones. Now, if you look from the profile, you'll see the exact same thing. It really starts to lift the eye up again instead of kind of drawing that eye down the shape. Now that we've talked about those, let's talk about some curveballs. Now, the first curveball is just kind of switching up the actual color. Now, I like Paula's color actually, but I think that it would even look better if we added a little bit more kind of drama to it. I think we could add a little bit more depth to the base and kind of brighten up the highlights a little bit to kind of show a little bit more contrast. So if we did that, this is what it would look like. Now, this is also going to be more maintenance, obviously, so that is something that we definitely need to take into consideration. Maybe more maintenance than Paul even wants to take on. But I do like the richness that it adds to her skin tone, and I actually like the movement and texture that it creates in the overall shape. But I also wanted to show you a little bit of a different kind of style or shape altogether. And so, now, here is another option for Paula that I think would look great. Now, you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She said that she's willing to style it. Why aren't you doing something that's maybe straight? And the simple answer to that is, she did say in her email, I'm willing to style my hair. But she also threw in the rather large caveat of, as long as it doesn't take too much time or work or effort. Now, here's the thing. Going straight may cause it to take so much time or just enough extra time and effort that it's kind of not worth it to Paula. And even though she thinks it's a great idea, she may find herself never really doing that very often. So it kind of becomes a little bit of a moot point. And the bigger concern with that is when you're cutting hair for curly hair versus for straight hair, there are different ways that you can approach curly hair. You can do things with the layering in curly hair, take layers shorter in certain areas, that you can't do in straight hair. So I kind of find that it tends to work best if you can decide, I'm going to wear my hair straight 75 to 90 percent of the time or i'm going to wear it curly 75 to 90 percent of the time because then you can really dial the cut in so i don't know that she would be styling it straight every single day but also i kind of like the little bit of softness that the curl or wave gives to paula so moving into something that does have a little bit more of a kind of straighter or styled look if you will then this I think is a great option for. We stuck with a very similar color in this one where it does give it a little bit more dimension. But again, I just think that that kind of has a nice little kind of bit of drama. Now, this particular wavy style really isn't that much different in length than where Paula is right now. If she actually styled her hair wavy versus curly, it would be a bit longer and it would probably land somewhere in this general area. And it would actually last multiple days. So it may take her a little bit longer to style that one particular morning. But realistically, it might last a few days and actually just be a really easy touch up to get the same kind of look back. So it's kind of a scenario where you spend a little bit extra time up front to get some extra length in the overall result. So yeah, that's my opinion. I like this shape, but I don't know. What do you think, Ben? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> you learned from the last time I, I said did. that, huh? Here, you want me to show it to you? Yeah. Here, let me show it to you and you see what you think, okay? So here's Paula. Okay. Oh, she's pretty. There she is. She's Aww. pretty, right? I love her smile. Okay, so there's Paula. Uh-huh. Now, what if we darkened up the color and did something a little bit more like that? Oh, I like that. It's got, it's got the like the contrast it makes. Yeah. Right? And then <gasps> Ooh. Oh, she's got some curtain bangs. Some some, some slight curtain bangs, yes. Yeah. A little bit not quite curtain because she doesn't style it on in the center. Oh, or she okay. styles it to the side, so I wanted to do it to the side still. I got it. I like it. I like well, because that's kind of similar to how I have my like color anyways, where it's kind of darker and then it's lighter, so you can get away with grow out for a lot longer. <laughs> this is true. So tell me this, would you think, do you think she should stay where she's at right now with a little bit of the shorter kind of curly look or do you think she should move into more of a wavy look? I, I'm always, I always like the wave just because my hair sticks straight. So yeah. you always want what you don't have, right? She so, has curly though. She has curly. Well, I would love to have curly hair. Well, that's not the question now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the, I guess it I guess it depends on her lifestyle, right? Like what does she do? I don't know the background. What does she do? Well, neither one of us know the background, so this is based on just when you're looking at the photo. I like the long only because I just think it's super fun. 
Okay, fair enough. I like it too. But the big question is, what do you think? So you know where it's at. Comment below. Let us know. And uh, if you agree with me, which, I mean, I like them all. So <laughs> I did it. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> so let's see if you agree with Deanna or not. Long or short? <laughs> Let us know downstairs. All right. You guys have a fantastic Tuesday. I appreciate you hanging out through my tick bite scenario. And if I'm still alive next week, I'll see you in a brand new video. <laughs> Take care, everyone. We'll see you then. Bye. And thanks for saving me, babe. That was awesome. I always know I can count on, count on you, right? No. Not so much. No, you're hosed, honey. <laughs> I'm not saving you for junk. <laughs>